Hello everyone. Wait a minute. There we go. I better get my uh, <laughs> better get my mic in front of me here. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to another Canadian Immigration Live Q and A. I'm your host, Mark Holthy, Canadian Immigration Lawyer. And <clears throat> wow, this is uh, there's some things that are actually starting to change within immigration. I think you guys probably watched the video that I did just the other day. And if we flip over here to the YouTube channel, you will see that the Foreign Worker Program has made some pretty amazing updates and uh, they're just in recognition of what's been happening across the country and if we flip over here and I go over to the YouTube channel here which many of you are watching on you'll see that I did a video just the other day um, which is really good news for foreign workers that does open up some possible new options in places that didn't exist before so you definitely need to head over there if you haven't watched that and and watch that one you'll know that uh, tomorrow Alicia and I are going live uh, once again in her Q&A. So if you don't get your questions answered today, Alicia will be there and ready at 11 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow to do that. I got a little bit of a late start here because it was a crazy morning. I did an application update for a client. I took my vehicle to the to the, the car repair and uh, scrambled as fast as I could to get this all prepped up. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. So lots of people are jumping in here. Hold off on your questions for a little bit. I got a couple quick announcements that I want to make. As always, one of them is the fact that the minister actually listened to me. And I know some of you have been just looking at these processing times and have been so frustrated because they just don't reflect the reality of the world. Well, now you guys, things have changed. So they have updated the processing times so that they actually reflect where things are at so that you guys can legitimately understand where you're at in the queue. And I've had probably four consults. It says April the 1st is when they upload, uh, when they updated this five days ago, <clears throat> but it's just only recently come to our attention. So if you look here, many of you are asking, I'm an outlander, FSW, what are the processing times? How much longer do I have to wait? Many, many people are asking these questions to me, and they're probably one of the most common questions we get here in the live Q&A. So let's go here, economic immigration, and then we will choose whichever you are. Are you a federal skilled worker? Are you a Canadian experience class? We'll go federal. Have you already applied? I already applied. And then you click on the processing times, and it is showing 27 months. Now, I want you guys to put this into context, okay? Because these processing times are across the board. So they are the average processing times all across, you know, across the landscape of, of application. So some places may take longer, i.e. India, others may be faster, maybe someone who's in the US. So you can see now that they've actually, and you can see April the 4th, and then they always indicate as well, um, you can see what's missing here. From this is there's no longer any mention of using the pandemic as an excuse. So they've removed that from it. But now you can look and you can get an idea. And people may be horrified with this. 27 months is off the charts. Absolutely. But understand, this is people who've submitted their applications 27 months ago. And what people are not talking about and what they don't understand is that if you're filing your application now, it's not going to take 27 months. If you filed your application, say, maybe the beginning of 2020, maybe the beginning of 2021, well, these processing times are not going to be reflecting exactly the same for individuals. 
So these will come down. They will absolutely. And uh, But for people who are seeing their applications being assessed right now, some of them are at the 27 month mark. So let's take a look at um, uh, CEC in Canada. So we open that up, check the processing times. Have you already applied? Yes, I already applied. Check them. You can see in Canada down to eight months. So this is the distinction and they are working like crazy to get this sorted out. Um, I wanna show you one other thing and that is if we go federal, and then if we click on I haven't applied yet, you can see that they're still issuing 27 months. They're still indicating 27 months. Let's take a look at the other one that people are asking about, provincial nominees. Okay, we will say yes, it is express entry. Processing times, 22 months for PNPs. So that is the, the you can now go here and with some degree of re reliability, um, you can except at least that you know, relatively speaking, how to govern your life going forward. And in the past, when um, these processing times only said six months, it was absolutely useless. And if you recall me saying this in the past, that was the last thing that I said to Minister Fraser. I said, look, people need to be able to govern their lives. And they can't if you're listing six month processing times when in reality, it's at the time, 22 months. So I just wanted to bring that up to everybody. And uh, yeah, this is, um, this is, the world that we're in right now. Um, I'm also really, really excited to announce that I have a new sponsor that is coming on board. And my sponsor is right here. Wow, that's a little bit bigger than I intended. Let's see if we can shrink this down and it should show up good on my white shirt here. <laughs> we're going to bring this over here. So Journey Business Plans. So they are um, a company that is uh, is going to be coming on and doing some sponsoring for me. And uh I don't vouch for anyone that I haven't used and I refer my clients to these guys. They do a great job. Um, simply put, they are the most reputable and experienced immigration business plan writing company out there. And uh, when you think about all the different ways that immigration um, would require a business plan, sometimes you don't even think about situations where, where it would be beneficial. Um, is a business plan required in the context of a study permit application? No. But if you're a company and you're sending someone into Canada and it's a new startup and you're looking to um, to uh, to demonstrate that you know you have the means and ability to establish a new company, transfer people into Canada, absolutely. And um, you know I've worked with Journey on a number of business immigration cases in the past, and for a simple flat fee, just like we do in our form, they quickly produce professional business plans that literally give people an edge. And if you don't include one or you do a crappy job at it. The reality is it's going to affect the ability of your application to be approved. Um, their expertise, responsiveness, and impressiveness, and the turnaround and delivery time is, is off the charts. And that's one of the things. We don't have a lot of time to sit around for months and months waiting for uh, business plans to be generated and just turn it over to the experts, right? The plans are expertly written. And as I said, they can make all the difference in the application. So whether you have, and if you think about the different types, intercompany transfers, startup visas, some of you entrepreneurs out there, C11 significant benefit, which is really getting um, a lot more attention now that the um, now that the owner operator LMIAs are out the door. And those of you who are familiar with those, C11 is becoming a much more uh, viable option. Well, business plans are essential. Uh, if you're self-employed, a PR, and many of you have asked questions about applying for self-employed permanent residents, it doesn't say anywhere in the application that a business plan is, is a requirement, but it is absolutely essential for me and I direct all my clients to journey. And uh, obviously the PNP entrepreneur programs, all of these things or any other business pathway um, will benefit um, you know, considerably from the use of journeys business plans. So I have no problems vouching for them and um, you know, having a good business plan and having a partner like Journey in that, in that process can make all the difference. So if you wanna find them, all you have to do is go to www.journey, that's J-O-O-R-N-E-Y dot C-A. And as a little added bonus here, I'm just gonna shift over and just show. This is their site and whether you are an applicant applying on your own, whether you're an immigration consultant or lawyer out there, um, startup, M&A firm, they've got something for everyone. So 
Big shout out to Journey. Thank you for being the sponsor of my live streams and uh, the cool stuff we're doing on the Canadian Immigration Institute. So shout out. All right, let's jump in and we are not going to wait. We're going to go right into the questions. Rapid fire. Um, Big shout outs to everybody that's tuning in. Uh, We've got LinkedIn. We've got Facebook in the house. We've got uh, Carlos. Good to see you, all the faithful, and you guys know who you are. If I don't hit you with a with a shout out, Jennifer and everybody else. Jennifer's in Calgary, just close. And um, yo, the man with the beard. Apparently, I do have something going there. Uh, I forgot to wash my face this morning. Okay, Rashid, good to see you. Uh, Karam and Mohammed's watching on LinkedIn. I love the fact this is getting stretched out to LinkedIn, and you guys can actually watch it. And uh, let's see, we got some good news here. Do we have some good news? I think we do. Uh, Dara says, good morning. Got my passport request two weeks ago, and today my visa and COPER arrived. Can't wait to land in a few months. Thanks for all the info shared here. It helped a lot. There's a big celebration. Oh, I forgot I was going to institute my big, big celebratory. Okay, I'm going to plan for tomorrow. There's been so much going on here that I literally um, have been scrambling nonstop. And so bear with me. Okay, uh, let's keep jumping in. Thesura, good to see you, my friend. Awesome to have you connecting in. And uh, and goatee. Well, it's not quite a goatee, but we'll roll with it, Amy. It's probably, uh, Amy, essentially, it's uh, not really growing anywhere else. So I guess that's why. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's, we'll jump down here and uh, those of you who are posting questions, hang tight. I'm going to announce it, uh, the green light in just a second. Ramesh, it's good to see you. Jama with the South African flags all over the place, good to see you. And as of now, go ahead and post your questions and I will answer those right now. Put a cue in front of it and, uh, and then we will roll from there. Okay, first question is from CF. I received uh, ADR. For Schedule A and PCC, okay? I just finished uploading and reviewing one for a client this morning. They're coming like crazy, especially when processing times are 27 months, you know, 22 months. That length of time, immigration is absolutely going to be coming back asking for this because they want to figure out where you're at, what's updating. One of the things we are seeing is that medicals in some instances are being extended. So the need to do a medical, they're starting to realize, hey, It's taking us a long time to have to wait for the medical. It's And you know what? What are the risks? What's the likelihood that the person's health has changed in one year? Most of these people are young, healthy people. And I think they looked at the risk and they realized that it was low. And so because of that, they said, look, for the purposes of efficiency, trying to get through all of this backlog well in order to do it, something's going to have to give and that's medicals. So it may very well be that we're going to see more of these Schedule A and PCC requests and not uh, medicals, but we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Okay, Um, CF says, however, they're asking me to submit the documents on the same day I received the request. Is that a technique to refuse my application? CF, I'm going to ring this bell and uh, encourage you to book a consult so that we can look at that in detail because I need to see what's going on. If you look at your letter, more often than not, you will see that they direct you to upload it into your MyCIC account. And on there, you will see that there is a timestamp that's on there that's usually gives you 30 days. So go take a look. If the date that they put on there, it's a glitch, it's an error. There's no way they give you one day to respond. And if they do, that's 100% a reviewable error. Um, But on the letter, if you read down a little bit further, you should see that it says you have 30 days Uh, to to submit from the date of the letter. So that date that they put on there is, if it's expiring literally the same day that you received it, then uh, it's probably a glitch, probably. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh, Steel cycling. (laughs) I've been enjoying my little Peloton bike, I'll be honest. It's been kind of fun uh, pedaling around. And, um, you know, those high intensity (laughs) workouts, I've noticed that my cardio is getting a whole lot better. So shout out to Peloton. Um, it's the, it's really easy. I just go down into the bedroom and jump on the bike and I've got the screen and I've got some instructor telling me not to be a wuss and, and to keep pedaling. And so I do. And I tend to be a competitive person. And so when I look at other people and 
that gets me motivated as well. So shout out to Peloton. Okay, I love that, steel cycling. Okay, greetings from New Delhi. Would like to share that I got my Coper. Okay, FSW February 2020 after 756 days. I've watched your channel since February 2020. I'm already applauding here. I'm already applauding. Thanks for everything. I land in Canada in May. Fantastic. You know what, guys? I think what we need to do is to have a Canadian Immigration Institute alumni party celebration where everybody who's come through the channel, we like schedule a live event and just have people fly in. They can fly into Lethbridge, register in advance, and we can just have a whole lot of fun, a big party. I think that would be so cool. Thank you for sharing that, Steel Cycling. Fantastic. Love it. Okay. Sangini says, hey, Mark, any updates for CEC draws or post-grad extensions? Will 470 be enough for CEC ITA this year? Looking at the inventory numbers, I believe eventually CEC 470 will be enough. But initially, they're going to have to flush out a bunch of people. And uh, many people who are CECs are going through PNP. So those numbers, people are transitioning. But there's still an absolute ton of international students that are looking to transition through. No word yet on CEC draws, but like I said repeatedly, the minister has said the spring. And as far as I'm concerned, June is not the spring. June, summer. April? Maybe today? Let's take a look. Is any any changes? Let's pull it up right now. Let's pull it up right now and see if there's any changes. So I'm going to express entry rounds of invitations, pulling it up. Any new announcements? March 30th which was a week ago, nothing today. It's actually unlikely that there would be today. If anything, we will see something next week, but there's been crazier things happen. So I am holding out that potentially April showers will bring May flowers, which I've joked with Alicia. Will that mean that the, the flowers will be a CEC round of invitation? Maybe. Could it be that April surprises us? Maybe. That we will have to see. Okay. Fayaz says, usually how much time it takes from PR portal to eCoper? I uploaded my picture last week and still waiting for eCoper. You are well within the times. And if you connected with my good friend Chitanya and you watched him, Chitanya, I think it was almost three weeks for him to get the stuff once he completed everything within uh, submitting the information through the, the PR portal. So you're well within those processing times, Vyas. Okay, Fabio says, can we extend the length of an LMIA after we renew our passports? Some LMIAs are for two years, but my passport can give me one year. So Fabio, in those circumstances, you can actually use that old, that old LMIA once you've got your new passport to, if you do this correctly, you can use it to extend your work permit um, that full to get the full one year, um, even if your LMIA has expired. So you have to do it correctly, but when it's done correctly, you can literally extend based on the old one. Okay. All right. Uh, Sissi is in Ethiopia. Hello. Um, okay. Syed has got a bunch going on here. He says, hard to fill skill pilot, Saskatchewan. Under this program, how we can get PR for our family, please discuss pros and cons of this pilot in regard to PR. Okay, so that is a massive issue, a massive question. And when it comes to breaking this all down, I'm actually in the process of writing a book. It is a, uh, a, a manual on economic, uh, the economic PR programs, so economic permanent residence. And we're just working through the details with uh, Eamon, who's the publisher, uh, Andrew and, my, and myself are. Um, and I will definitely go through those types of things um, in, in that book. But with each program, we just don't have time, Syed, to go through. I have to pick quick questions and go through quick ones, but this is a great topic for an upcoming video. So I will put that in the little top pocket here, <laughs> and we will, we will keep it as a, uh, a recommendation for future. All right. Uh, Jeremiah says, thank you so much. I need help on how to get to practice law in Canada. I'm from a common law African country. Jeremiah, that's a good question. And you can always book a consult and we can talk about the ins and outs. In fact, Igor, who's in our office, is actually going through this process right now and we'd be happy to share insight. Um, if you want to book a consult, we can talk about all of that. 
All right. Um, uh, Beret says my postgrad expires next year, September. CEC has not given draws. Should I apply for a work permit extension? Also, 337 points are good for starting my express entry CEC. There's nothing stopping you, depending on where you live, Barry, uh, from submitting a profile. 337 is really low. But provinces like Alberta, if your occupation is in a demand area, people as low as 300 are getting nominations. And your work experience is the critical component. Maybe with the work you're doing, you may open up doors to various PNPs. Um, but ultimately, if your postgrad is expiring next year, um, in terms of applying for a work permit extension, you need to have a basis upon which to do it. And unless you have a PR application in the queue where you can then apply for a bridging open work permit or you have a spouse who's in Canada who is working on a work permit or themselves or going to school themselves, it, you can't really transition to another work permit. But that is something that uh, um, we'll just have to see how it plays out with, with CEC. Okay, uh, Super Bufana says... If I get a police certificate from my country of citizenship as living abroad and visit after it's issued, will I need a new one or a short visit won't invalidate the one I already have? This is a great question. This is a question that I've gotten a lot over the years and I've specifically brought it up with immigration. So I remember I was doing, I think it was, where was it? Maybe Ottawa or one of our national conferences and I was doing the express entry panel and uh, the former... Uh, head of the express entry system, Tracy Burt, was in that panel and this came up and I asked her, I said, so will a short little trip back to say India, if the police certificate was obtained after they'd left originally, will that invalidate the police certificate at a short little trip? And she said, and we wrote those questions down and the answers down and provided those to the people who were attending the session. She said, no, a short visit is not going to be a problem. But I will tell you this, Super Bufana. If it is not an issue for you to obtain a new police certificate, then I will get a new one every single time. And why? Because in the early days, 2015, the officers also told us that we didn't always need to have the police certificates at all, that they would be reasonable if we'd taken steps to get them. And then guess what happened? They started refusing for no police certificates on the ground. So what I hear from the officers at the top compared to what the officers at the bottom who are processing the applications are doing, there is sometimes a very large gap between the two. So because of that, I do not take any chances. And in your case, I would get a new one. Great question. Okay, next here, uh, Jama says, private sponsorship since 2019 did medical 2021, IRCC changing processing times. Well, let's go take a look. So we don't know the country, but we can go here, economic, family sponsorship. We can go here, spouse, we'll say living outside Canada is probably the case. Check processing times, it's sitting at 20 months for outside Canada. And you can see every, the, the visa offices are, have different processing times in different locations. So this is a ballpark. We click on this little thing and it says we're, com we're committed to processing most applications within this time. And the processing times will vary based on, you can see type, application, whether it's complete, how quickly they, ex they expect to process, they, um, how quickly we expect to process applications we've already received, how easily we can verify your information. That's kind of like the background stuff where some countries are harder to verify than others. How long you take to respond to any requests or concerns, that's on you. If they ask you for something, how long are you gonna respond? And then I love this one, other factors which are basically, we have five gazillion people that are applying from India and we have 10 officers to process, whereas we have 500 people uh, going through, who knows, uh, Nairobi, and we have 10 officer proce processing. So you can do the math. So that's factors that you can consider and factors that play a role, but there we go. That's the processing, 20 months. Um, Jonah says... Is there any chance to have a CEC draw now in April? Anything is possible. Anything is. We know that the minister, Minister Fraser, has indicated that he would resume FSW draws in the spring. CEC, he hasn't confirmed one way or another. But we know that they absolutely need to do something. We know work permits are expiring from some postgrad work permit holders. Options are limited. And yes. 
Okay. Um, Eric says, I already got a POE letter for working holiday. Can I enter Canada with additional ETA firstly and go back to border to get work permit weeks later to make time for job search? Eric, I usually don't do that. Ultimately, what happens is, and I know what you're saying, you don't want to burn up the, the limited time that you have. Um, usually when you come in, the officers will want to issue that permit on the spot. Um, because what are you going to say the purpose of your entry is? Well, I just want to come and look for a job and then come back and get the work permit after I've got it, which is not a horrible plan. But I think the CBSA officers, the board of service officers will um, often not want to do that. And they'll say, look, either get the work permit or not. Um, but hey, if you come in, Eric, you're on an ETA, you arrive, you say, hey, I'm here. I'm just searching for a job. I don't want to burn up my work permit right now. Can I wait until... Uh, you know, the, the job offer has been extended and then I can come down and then I don't waste my one year. If you can explain it, Eric, if you can articulate that to an officer, maybe they'd be willing to let you come in. But what is the purpose of your entry? Is it truly to visit or is it to work? And that's where sometimes it can be an issue. And when you have your letter ready, it's in the system already for immigration. So, and you don't want to misrepresent anything. Um, okay, yeah. And so Gunnar says, hey, Mark, I've been watching interviews by the minister. Everybody has. Is there a serious consideration of extension of post-grad or resumption of CC draw? CC score is 507. Yes, there is absolutely a serious consideration. They've got, they're inundated with the, um, well, like you guys know, if I flip my screen around here and I go here, this one right here that's free, Canada, Ukraine, authorization for emergency travel. This has become a massive, massive undertaking. Um, and uh, I just also want to show you guys here, if I if it's posted, um, we should have a playlist here. Do, 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 do. Interesting. Maybe I don't have the playlist visible. We have to adjust this. Canada, Ukraine, application for emergency travel. So when you go to our website, what I've done now, because this is a little bit more hassle, and we have probably 500 people that have, taken this free course. But now what I've done on the YouTube channel is I've made all of the lessons all available um, so that people can watch them on demand right here on our channel. So these are the instructions on how to file that application. And so um, it's kind of fun though, because when I go here and I type in Canada, Ukraine, authorization, authorization for emergency travel, Canada, I love this. Google is kind to me. And so you can see they pull up my videos right here. And um, yeah, very, very kind. They, they're very good with, with pushing out my, my videos here, all the stuff that we've done. And it's kind of fun to dominate that area. And especially when they push out something good where we're offering free assistance and help for people who are trying to navigate their way through. So there we go, long story. Okay, um, Lisa says, do you think it's worth going back to the home country uh, to wait for CC draw to come down to 450, work permit is expiring March 2023. Well, obviously, you're going to continue working. You're going to do everything in your power to be able to maximize your Canadian work experience. And then it's a matter of waiting. You know that CEC doesn't require you to be in Canada. We know that. Um, but, uh, but ultimately, you want to do everything you can to maximize the number of points that you can get. And uh, obviously, with time, I'm assuming age is a factor for you as well. You know, everything after you, when you turn 30, you start to lose five points, right? And then once you hit in the 40s, then you start losing 10 more. I'm just going to flip this around here and remind everybody about our new blogs that we've posted. So, um, if my spouse is Canadian, should they be listed as accompanying or non accompanying in my EE profile? Sometimes people are get married to Canadians while they're here and still want to go through EE. So, Alicia um, has written this blog. Those of you who are asking questions about provincial nominations, so immigrating to Ontario through the OINP, Chanel has, uh, she's um, done this one and, and we're going to be releasing two separate videos on both of these topics. And um, she covers the in, ins and outs of, of the application processes and everything in this awesome little blog post that she created. So I want to give her a shout out. But if we scroll down here, um, especially when it comes to what do I do? Right here, you guys, if you've not watched or if you've not read this blog that Alicia did, how long can I stay in Canada after my work permit expires? We really do need to change this title. And I know we say this all the time, but essentially she goes into great lengths as to all of the options, 
for people that are in your situation right here. So get over to the Healthy Law website and go to our blog and pull that up and read it. Uh, there's lots of helpful information in there. Um, okay. Okay, this is a tough one, Rashi, and I'm going to ring the bell and say you really need to book a consult. I need to understand that once we have refusal for my student visa, everything was perfect in our documentation. My husband applied for a work permit and two children as depended. The refusal was they were not convinced about us leaving Canada after completion of my studies. We see this all the time, Rashi. It could be age gaps. It could be a whole host of things. And um, it's super, super complex trying to figure out how to deal with these. If the refusal was not correct in law, then absolutely in every situation possible, I recommend that you book a consultation with an immigration lawyer to assist you. And obviously we are more than willing to help. You go over to our same website here. And uh, if we just jump back, you can speak to a lawyer right in the top, book a consult. And I recommend that you book a consult with Alicia, uh, Chanel or, or Susan or myself. We're all here to help you. All right. Okay. Zipping through here. Um, okay. Uh, so this is a good one. So Mady says, hey, what do you think about the new program made by Quebec named PMI Plus? It consists in on bringing foreign workers who hold the CSQ and waiting, uh, waiting their PR. I don't really have anything to say about that. Um, I don't have any experience and I don't do Quebec-based immigration myself. I refer that out to uh, my colleagues out in Quebec. And, uh, and so, but it's a good topic. Once again, put it up here in the top pocket. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it as an idea for a future video. Thanks for that. Okay. Um, okay. Super Bafana is back again. Says, is it possible to create a profile in the job bank before the PR profile? Or would you advise starting the PR profile, then the job bank profile, job seeker? Thank you so much. Doesn't matter. Completely irrelevant. Doesn't matter. You're not even required to do it. Employers, I'll be honest, rarely find people through there. But there's no harm and there's no advantage one way or another. Okay. Zipping through here. Um, okay. CF says it does say that I have 30 days, but on the portal, it does not give me 30 days. It still says the same day date. You will see that it won't close. So it's not going to close that portal. So that, that spot. So 30 days is the day that you can rely upon. But in all honesty, I would move as quickly as you can to get it updated. And then when, and when I've seen this with other clients, because I have, I will always include uh, the original request letter and I'll say, your letter had an error in it. You say 30 days, but then you put a date that's not correct and the date in the portal is not correct. So I'm submitting it within the 30 days and uh, just letting you know that, yes, there was an error on your side, not mine. So, okay. Um, lots of people, when will the French stream ONP be back again? I know you guys, lots of people are asking about that. We don't know. It is a surprise. Poof, and then there it is. So go back to the ONP site repeatedly, watch, and ultimately, if you have a profile in the pool and you get a notification of interest, that's when you'll know. So your job is to keep your profile active. All right. Um, okay, here's a good one. John says, I'm a PR and my brother is applying for a study permit. Will my status affect his application? They look at everything right? And if an officer wants to be a jerk and wants to um, use you being there as a permanent resident as a negative factor when applying for a study permit, they can do that. But can they use that as the sole reason or ground for not approving the study permit? Because you, maybe you came as a student and then became a permanent resident? Well, that's too great of a leap there. And that alone as a ground for refusal, in my opinion, is a reviewable error which can be taken to federal court. All right, we'll try to get some new people here um, that we have not yet got a question from. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Mary says, please, um, I finished every procedure left with the decision made by immigration that the spells of sponsorship application, it's been 14 months already, nothing is heard, what do I do then, please? You, you wait, Mary. And I don't see here anything about, um, uh, we because we've looked at the proceedings and times, I don't see whether you're in Canada or outside Canada. And we, we just looked at those processing times. And if we flip back over here, you can see, Mary, that it's 20 months if your partner's living outside Canada. So 
take that into consideration. If you've done everything, then it's a waiting period. Okay, here's a good question, Isla. Hey, Mark, is it okay for a three-year work permit holder to be unemployed, go on a vacation for three months, and come back and apply for a knock job? Or do they have to have a job secured before returning to Canada? This stems from the travel restrictions that used to exist. So when Canada had um, restrictions that did not allow someone to come in unless the purpose of their travel was essential, people that didn't have a job who left on an open work permit and then sought to come back were denied entry if they didn't have a job waiting for them because they considered that to be non-essential. But those uh, restrictions are now lifted and I never ever want to give anyone any advice leaving or going or coming um, or any specific things as to what they should do over this YouTube channel. That's legal advice. And I recommend Isla that you slide over and book a consult. Um, but the restrictions that made that a problem for people to come back in the past are no longer there. So those travel restrictions don't exist, provided the person meets the other requirements, such as the double vaccinations that are accepted. April 1st lifted the requirement for overseas testing for the most part. Um, if you have a valid work permit, a valid temporary a, a TRV or visa in your passport that authorizes you from an immigration standpoint to return, there's no barrier to coming back on that open work permit and taking a vacation. But there's a lot of different factors. And by no means am I telling you, Isla, that you can do that and you can leave. But as general information, the restrictions that would have prevented someone in that situation from returning do not exist right now. Okay, but anything can happen when you leave. Anything can happen. Okay, let's see what's next here on the list here. I think I bumped this. Okay. Um, yes, Sanjini, I know everybody's hoping. Uh, oh, yes. We are seeing the flower here in Vancouver already. So early spring would change the minister mind. Maybe, right? Maybe. And I'm really excited because I'm just in the process of booking my flight to go to Vancouver June the 2nd. And then June 3rd is our very first hybrid portion of our online symplo symposium uh, that will be in Vancouver. And I'm going to head out there and spend some days, uh, the day with my colleagues attending that live session, that live event. And for those immigration lawyers who are watching, remember you need to register for that uh, CBA. There's going to be hubs in Toronto and Montreal as well. I believe Toronto the 10th, Montreal the 17th of June and Vancouver is the third. So if you haven't, head on over there and uh, and register for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, uh, first super chat of the day here under a spousal open work permit. And this is uh, RCM 00. Uh, here under a spousal open work permit eligible under PNP and CEC. Will my work permit be affected if I legally separate from my partner and apply for PR separately? Ring the bell. I really, really encourage you to book a consult. But generally speaking, when it comes to open work permits, spousal work permits, regardless of whether or not you're still with that spouse or if that spouse is, you know, has transitioned or done something, who knows, whatever it is, it does not invalidate your open work permit. You can continue to work on that work permit provided you do not leave the country. So you can keep working. The work permit remains valid unless an, uh, an, um, a removal order becomes enforceable. Essentially, you get in trouble and they're sending you out. Then they can cancel the work permit or the work permit itself expires. Those are the two, um, the two factors that come into play when it comes to the expiry of open work permits. So um, anytime, legally separated or otherwise, um, you know, apply for PR separately. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. And uh, obviously, you need to establish clearly that that separation existed and that's super complex and you definitely don't want to take it lightly. Uh, but it, it may be possible if you do things correctly. And ring the bell like I always do. Slide over here. Book a consult. There you have it. Okay, let's see what is next here on our list. Looks like we've got another super that's popped up. This one is from Wiza. Mark, what are the chances of getting a post-grad work permit extension before September? I'll be short by two months for the required one-year experience needed for CEC. I see this all the time, you guys. 
And this is something that I, I, I harp on all the time. Um, those of you who have not yet gone and watched, this is one of the questions that I actually pulled up and that I did uh, for the little fun video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. The Immigration Help Desk. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, I was playing basketball just last, last night for the first time in four years. But this video here, Immigration Help Desk, go check it out on the YouTube channel. This one, I've got my special guest there, George who's the helpful immigration advisor. And one of the questions that came in through the Twitter channel, um, and if I go to Twitter here, let's just see. I'm just gonna pull this up. I'm gonna go to my profile. And some of you will remember that when I did, um, what's going on here? No, I don't wanna change that. Go away, stop, this one. So a while back I had posted, oh, we've had quite a bit going through there. Oh yeah, that was my run in. Six and a half hours it took me to get through um, the port of entry here at Coots and, uh, oh my goodness, not fun, not fun at all. Okay. Um, oh, that was so horrible. I had lo loads of time to tweet about this. So this one right here, there were 171 replies. I posted, I'm an immigration lawyer. Ask me anything. This is the video that I created in response to that, which we launched five days ago. But go check it out. It's actually kind of funny. And uh, big shout out to my daughters who helped me make this. And uh, my one daughter was George. So she uh, it's hilarious. You can see her in the background sometimes. But go check that out. It was We had a lot of fun. And I answered this question. Um, it was a question about, you know, is, is, is it good to do, essentially, is it, is it worthwhile to only take a one-year program? And I will repeatedly say no. If your desire is to become a permanent resident and you're not otherwise off the charts with CRS points, if you need work experience to transition to PR, never ever take a one-year program because you're only going to get one year on your post-grad work permit. And if you only have one year and you're delayed, such as the working holiday question we had earlier in this live um, Q&A, um, you often are not going to have enough time to start the job and work until and to accumulate the full one year. And you can't even apply for permanent residence until you've reached the one year, which then means work permits are expiring before you can even get the acknowledgement of receipt on the other side to allow you to apply for permanent residence. And when it comes to CEC going through express entry, it takes time, even in the best of circumstances, for the ITA to be issued. And even if you're ready immediately the next day to submit it, your work permit is still going to be expiring. So those are all factors that you absolutely have to take into consideration. It, it is just, yeah, it is not uh, an easy situation. And so I strongly advise people do not study for a year. Now, the question, will the extension come? I've, we've been lobbying for it. We've been requesting that the minister do it. They've been dragging their feet. I don't know what the holdup is. I'm not sure why they're doing it. Uh, maybe they've made the decision that, well, we're going to save some, but we can't save everybody. Maybe that's the case and people have to go home. And maybe this is their mechanism to to cull out the, you know, six, seven hundred thousand international students or whatever that are in Canada right now. I don't know. I don't know what the holdup is. The minister hasn't hasn't brought that to our attention. And I'm just, there's no word on it. Uh, in our Q&A meetings that we have as immigration practitioners in the associations that we are a part of, CBA, uh, CAPIC and ACADI, uh, when we attend those meetings with, with immigration, um, you know, this is something we brought up in the past and I've asked the minister myself. We've actually provided a submission to the minister on this topic and I think many of you aren't aware of all the stuff that we do with the CBA immigration, um, uh, I'll put in here, national section submissions. Let's do this. And if you go here, submissions and res res resolutions that we've put out, um, and if we scroll through here, uh, you can see, see facilitating the transition of international students to permanent residence. We sent that to the minister. Temporary public policy and temporary pilot processing during COVID-19. We've sent that to the minister um, and expand access to work permits for foreign nationals. So you can see all of these here are all submissions that we have put together and sent to the department asking them to... Uh, help to facilitate the situation for international students. So extensions with certain modifications, pathways to permanent residence. So these are all things that we lobby um, heavily 
the 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 well we can't officially lobby we're not lobbyists but we provide submissions and we pr- explain why it's important to do it and that last one that we sent out was february like this is dated february the 16th you guys and so we've been on top of this for a long time and it was sent directly to the honorable senior uh, S- honorable sean fraser and so know that we're fighting for you guys why it's not happening i'm not sure okay Wojcik here we're gonna pull this in he says um if our country qualifies for eta does it mean we will have to send passports for stamping when we receive passport hopper no if you do not require a visa to travel which is a non-eta country then they will just ask for a um a photocopy of the passport but they um uh, when you when you send it in <clears throat> and you but you will still send to them the uh the the photos and co- confirm other biographical like your address things like that they have a an annex that they ask you to complete and send back to them uh, but you don't need to re- send your passports in but the photo is the original and then they send back the copers to you they mail those back and then you take those but no, there's no passport stamping, but there is still an element of getting a photo, putting it on the, the confirmation of permanent residence. So good question. Okay, next super chat. This one's from Raul. Um, my postgrad work permit expires in June, April 6th today, April 6th. My partner and I are common law and have a child together. She has a postgrad work permit good until November, 2023. Can I apply for a spousal open work permit? Yes, you may. You absolutely can transition to a spousal open. Um, uh, yes, you can. And uh, the, the key, Raul, as I say repeatedly over and over, and I ring the bell, if you do it correctly, um, it will work. But remember, she has to be working in a skilled occupation. And there are other factors that you must address when you're filing that, um, such as proving and you know that the a, jo- a letter from the employer confirming that it's a knock um <clears throat> b a or o position and um yeah I, I recommend you book a consult slide over raul and we can show you how to do that so that you don't screw it up and oh my goodness lately i don't know what it is lately you guys but my heart has just been breaking lately for the consultations that i've had and like i said uh, in the i think i mentioned this one on monday um, but there's so many people out there that say like, and I'm going to flip back here, like <laughs> George here, my, my helpful compadre on the, uh, on the video that I have here, George, the helpful immigration advisor who is not regulated, who's not a consultant, who's not a lawyer, who has a big Facebook or WhatsApp group, whatever you want to call it consistently says, you don't need to hire anyone to help you. You can do it yourself. It's easy. And that is a load of crap. The reality is some people are able to get through. Yes, they, they read everything meticulously. They understand things. They've spent hundreds of hours trying to research everything they can. And in the end, there's something that they just didn't understand. They misinterpreted the, the, the instructions on the website. Um, and they end up getting their applications refused. Then they choose because they realize George was stupid and, and listening to him with his, you know, in his... 30,000 WhatsApp group, members of his WhatsApp group, um, that, uh, you know, that it's so easy, you can do it yourself. And the government even tells you that until something is missing. And then they literally crucify you. So I had this wonderful person finishing up her study permit. She applies and forgets to include, and she knows who she is. She watches the channel. She forgets to include her confirmation of enrollment. Instead, she used the original confirmation of acceptance to the school that she used to get the study permit in the first place. Well, immigration, they're not always cruel. So they sent an email back to her through a portal saying, please upload confirmation of enrollment in school and we will extend the study permit. Well, she uploaded it, but in the MyCIC portal, she didn't click next in advance and submit it, actually send it off. So it said uploaded, but not submitted. Well, she didn't realize that. She thought she'd done what she needed to do. Well, processing times were slow. And after a number of months, they refused it because she didn't respond. She then didn't read the fine print on the refusal that said she only had 90 days to restore her status. So when she applied to restore her student status, well, they refused it because she was outside the 90-day window. And now, after visiting with her, 
the only feasible option is to return back home and apply for a study permit there. And um, yeah, and so it breaks my heart when I see people who are going through this situation and are, it was so preventable, but they just misread the, um, the instructions and it happens so often, you guys, so often. So yes, be careful, Raul. Make sure that uh, if you do it, that you're reading everything carefully, that you're responding completely and properly. All right, let's jump back to some more questions here. We have about three more minutes to go before we wrap it up. Um, Okay, this is a great question. So TJ says, my lawyer took over two months after I sent him all of my information, relationship, to send my outland spousal sponsorship. I felt like I was mistreated. So this is something that you direct, you you bring up directly with the lawyer. And every single lawyer is a member of law societies across the province. And if indeed this was a lawyer, and lots of times consultants, you know, there's an impression given that an immigration consultant is a lawyer, either, you know, um, either uh, intentionally or, um, you know, innocently, someone just assumes that they're a lawyer. Um, there's ways that you deal with that are different. But if they, if you felt like your application was prejudiced because the lawyer didn't action things properly, then understand you can go to the law society and file a complaint against that lawyer. And responsiveness is in failing to respond, failing to action in a timely fashion. All of those are very serious things that the law society takes. And so wherever that lawyer is, um, you have no problems whatsoever in filing a complaint to the law society. But I would go straight back to that lawyer and I would, yeah, I, I would I would complain to the lawyer. And, you know, if I had a situation like that and we had a study permit right now and the person who's, I don't even think they watch this, but um, we believe 100% that the, the refusal that we received on the study permit was wrong in law that could have been challenged. But the client was upset and they felt that we could have done something different in the study permit. Hindsight's always so much, so much easier when you look backwards. But I return all of the money. If a client is not happy, you know, we don't, it's not something that I advertise because we never ever, like very rarely do we have anything refused. And, um, but anyways, this client was very unhappy. And if you go to our, um, our Google reviews, I have very, very few, few negative um, comments. There's a couple that are just, they've got to be just spammers or, or people that are making things up because they're not even clients of the firm. But we definitely just recently got a one star because of that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we are definitely not going to be able to, um, to, you know, to keep everybody happy. But in this case, that, the, that client is getting all their money back. And, um, you know, we can't control what immigration does. And there was a pathway forward to, to rectify it. But the client wasn't happy. And if they felt we somehow fell short, we own it. And uh, so in that situation, if you've got a crappy lawyer who's doing a stupid, awful job, then complain and file a complaint to the law society because that lawyer will be brought to task and they'll have to respond. And so that is the law societies are no friends of the lawyers. They're not, they're there to protect the public. And that's you TJ. All right, let's get to one more question here. We're at 11 and then we're going to wrap this up. Uh, let's see if we can find something good to finish with a bang. Um, okay. Okay. We'll finish off with Parneet here. So can a person show experience in father's firm and salary is cash? Parneet, immigration will want, they expect you to be able to demonstrate and prove your work history and that you've been paid and all those kinds of things. And so when you work in a family business, there's no restriction that says you can't. But unless you have a formal job offer, you're actually getting paid and remitting taxes. Um, you can confirm and show that you are actively involved in the business it's going to be harder for you to convince immigration in those circumstances than if you were working for another company that paid you in cash that wasn't your family, your family's business. So that's how it rolls. All right, let's turn on a little wrap up music here. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in today. Uh, like I said before, I am so, so grateful for, uh, for Journey Business Plans. Once again, a nice, big, big, big logo here that I will adjust. So shout out to Journey Business Plans for being a sponsor of the Canadian Immigration Institute. 
And uh, if you are looking to track them down, all you have to do is slide over to their website right here. And it's www.journey.ca, which is J-O-O-R-N-E-Y.ca for those of you who are listening on the podcast. And uh, don't forget as well, you guys, and we'll pull the Journey logo off of here, that the Canadian Immigration Institute is alive and well. And we have another express entry course that is coming up in just a very short period of time. Yes, there is CPD accreditation for immigration consultants. And we also have the spousal course that is also coming up again. Um, we just finished the March 28th one. And uh, yeah, I love this stuff, you guys. I love it. Share the love with the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Travel course. And remember, YouTube, you can search through anything to find answers to questions from the hundreds and hundreds of past videos that I've done. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. And we will see all of you tomorrow at 11 a.m. with myself and Alicia. And we're back here doing another live Q&A for all of you. Take care and stay safe out there.